Luke chapter 3, this question really reoccurs. It kept coming up. Right. Then I got to Acts chapter 2. <clears throat> Brother Charlie came up again. I'm like, but there's a message here. And I think that all of us at one point <clears throat> in time should ask the question, what should I do? And so we're going to deal with this today. And I thought we'll be on the premise of that question. What shall we do? All right. What shall we do? What shall we do? All of you that have been baptized in Jesus' name. And those who have been filled with the Holy Ghost. At some point to ask the question, what shall I do? It's important. Because if you never ask questions, you never get an answer. Yes, sir. Right. So there isn't anything inappropriate or wrong with asking questions. Right. Sometimes we can be intimidated to ask. Mm -hmm. And because we fail to ask the question, right. we fail to get the results. Right. Right. Then people look at us as though we can choose to be ignorant. Okay. I'm always asking questions. Always. Because you never know, you might get the answer that you need to help you in life. Amen. Or to get you into a place, or get you in a, a, a status in life when you're trying to St. Luke chapter 3 is powerful. St. Luke chapter 3, verse 1. Now in the fifth reign, on the fifth year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar. Pontius Pilate being the governor of Judea, and Herod being the Tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip, Tetrarch of Victoria, and of the reign and of the region of Trachonitis, and Lysinius, the Tetrarch of Abilene. Abilene. Verse 3 and 2. Amos and Caiaphas being the high priests. The word of God came unto John, the son of Zebedee, in the world of this important. I know these two scriptures sound like, these two scriptures sound like some stuff given, but you have to understand the new perspective of his writing, why he's writing this. Notice he gives a time frame. Notice he gives people. Luke was a historian. And if you read Luke, he's the one who asked the author of Acts. He was not an apostle. But he was very intelligent, he was very inquisitive. He wanted to know the history of Jesus. So he gave us two settings. He gave us the setting of the government at that time, who was in charge. And then also in verse number two, you'll see here, and Amos and Caiaphas, being the high priest, he gave also the spiritual side. He gave the secular time frame, and he gave the spiritual time. All right. You see that? Yes, sir. And notice he named these people specifically because they are in your history books right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. That confirms God's word is real. Amen. Every Jew would know about Caiaphas and Amos. These are true figures in history. And Amos and Caiaphas being the high priest the word of the Lord came unto John, the son of Zechariah, in the wilderness, in the world. Now, now, you have to understand who he's talking about. And we'll see. It's clearly brought out in all the scriptures. John, the son of Zechariah, marries Elizabeth. Elizabeth is Jesus' mother's sister. That would make Zacharias and Jesus first person. Mm -hmm. All right. Hmm. Oh, man, wow. Isn't that something? Jesus, my first cousin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You want a miracle? Hey, I got a guy that can do it. <laughs> you got a devil in him? I can come back and get it out. <laughs> Wouldn't it be nice if Jesus had your first cousin? Anybody kill over there? We got a friend that can turn fish. He can take two fish and five loaves of bread and feed five hundred more thousand. Wow! And so, and Luke pins this. He's 
He brings in John. In this specific time frame in church history. Now, this is before there ever was a Methodist, a Catholic, a Church of Christ, a Church of God in Christ. This is before any of that. All that stuff, the organization was created after this. All right. So what you have now is the pure nucleus and the origin of the church. This is also prior to Jesus' death. Wow. So we have John. Uh, who the son of Zacharias. And notice verse 3. And he came into all the country about Jordan, preaching the baptism of what? For the what? The apostles had not been chosen yet. Right. There's no wrong scene. They're out fishing. Enjoying life. But this John is unique. He's different. Right. Everything about him is different. Yeah. And Luke, such a meticulous, studious individual, he makes sure he covers all the details. Right. Right. Give us who Zacharias is to help us tie this, tie this together and understand who John is. And notice he says here and he, in verse 3, and he came into all the country about Jordan, John was a preacher preaching the baptism of repentance for the remission of sin. Now this is important. John was born. <coughs> he was anointed to do nothing else but to preach the baptism of repentance for the remission of sin. Mm -hmm. That's something, isn't it? That's something. Some of you, Jesus wants to use mm. for a specific purpose in your life to give him glory. Mm. But we have to understand that in order for him to do this, we must be willing to become that vessel and surrender our heart, mind, and souls to him because he wants to use you to get a message to the world. Yes. Amen. Amen. Emmanuel, we're not just here to exist. We're here to give a message to the world. And we all, as a body, as an individual, can play a part of it. So here we have John. And his purpose was, he was preaching. Now, he wasn't a Baptist. Please, where did he get that from? He wasn't a Baptist. He was baptizing. He wasn't a what? A Baptist. He was going to what? Baptize. If I'm, I'm a fisher, I'm a fisher. Praise right. the Lord. Praise the Lord. Right. So you don't have to go to the organization to find him. Right. So he was a baptizer. Right. And notice he had the reason to baptize. Why were he baptizing people? Uh, now that's that back. I want to educate before. He was baptizing people for what purpose? For mission. For what? Mission. Now. He meant this way. Mm -hmm. Not talk about sin, people get mad. Oh, yeah. Come on. Can't do that to you. When we talk about sin, people get what? Offended. Why? Because it offends them. It offends them. Why do you become offended? Because it's a reason. Why? I'm asking questions. I took all the ex questions. Why do you become why? Because it makes you like you're not the person you portray yourself to be. Right? It makes you look like you're not so good of a person. And then you ask the question, well, I'm not a bad person. John didn't call nobody really a bad person. But we'll see later on in this lesson that he's going to address some issues. They're going to ask you questions. So we have to, the Bible is built upon sin, temptation, and righteousness. You can't get away from it. And the reason why, because when Adam and Eve sinned, Jesus came to get us out of sin to correct the, to correct the sin so we can have a good relationship with them. So I think we got to talk about it. Somebody stay around. Right. 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 Uh, listen, he said, and he came to all the country. He was preaching in the 
all going around preaching <laughs> all the reasons that you did. This is prophesied he was going to do this. Right. Same three, four. As it is written in the book of the words of Isaiah, or Isaiah the prophet said, the voice of one crying in the wilderness, propelling the way of the Lord, make his path straight. It had already been prophesied that John was going to be preaching like this. And the first thing about John was he was like, he was popular, but yet yeah, he was weird. Right. John was weird. He was weird. <laughs> eating wild locusts. How many of you have eaten wild locusts? I told my wife the other day, I'm going to start eating locusts. <laughs> <laughs> So I go with it. Do you not know that in the eastern world, locusts and the delicacy is high in protein and fiber? It's a good, it's a good food to eat. Right. Locusts is good. They're good for you. So if I have, if I invite you to dinner, please everyone I have, if we have locusts, you might not want to come. If I don't want to come, you don't go back yourself. <laughs> Jesus is here. Right. Yeah. 
whose fan is in his hand, mm -hmm. and he will thoroughly purge his floor, and will gather the wheat into the garner, but the chaff he will burn with unquenchable fire. And many other things in his exhortation preached he unto them. He answered the question, what shall we do? The people said, what shall we do? He said, go and say, do people right. Mm. The task of that said, what shall we do? He said, stop robbing people, cheating people. The soldier said, what shall we do? And he said, stop war, live in peace, and be happy with your wages. Yeah. And when I saw this, I said, wow. It's so much, so ties together. Then I come to Acts chapter 2, 36 to 41. John has been beheaded. He had his head cut off. They came to Jesus, you know, that Herod mm -hmm. had John killed, especially mm -hmm. that hurt Jesus' heart. So Jesus, after that, he was sad. But he began to preach the kingdom of God is in him. Now Jesus is crucified. Following the cross, he said, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He rises from the grave to tell all the disciples, he gives them together, he can sit down at the meal, and tell them to talk to him. And he says, go into all the world and preach to God for every preacher. He that believed he had baptized shall be saved. Mm -hmm. Then he said, to them. He, said, he said, teach them to baptize. Mm -hmm. Teach them to do what? Baptize. So in Acts chapter 1, Jesus gets on the cloud. And goes back to glory. The message still for the Jews. Mm -hmm. So now Paul Peter, in Acts chapter 1, Jesus goes back on the side. In Acts chapter 2, the great feast of Pentecost, all the Jews and all over the world were there. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to break it down. There was no racism. Mm -hmm. right. There was no such thing as racism. Right. It was all about salvation. Mm -hmm. It wasn't no black, green, y'all on there jumping out of existence. That was man made stuff and made up to fight and kill each other. Amen. Mm -hmm. Right. But see, with this gospel, there was no prejudice. Right. So Peter stands up. And he began to talk about how they crucified Jesus. In Acts chapter 2, 36, mm -hmm. he stands up. The Holy Ghost is following. The church is excited. All the Jews of every nation, they're probably in Medes and Arabians and, 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 and Elamites. They're all there. The Egyptians did all there. And they crucified Jesus. Acts 2 verse 36 says, Then therefore in all the house of Israel no sure mm -hmm. that God had made the same Jesus who was crucified for the Lord in Christ. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their hearts and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, there it is again. What did they say? What did they say? What did they say? There the question again. Isn't that problem? John told them what to do. He told the Pharisees, the, uh, the general public, what to do. He told the tax collectors what to do. He told the Roman soldiers what to do. And now Peter is telling the whole nation. In fact, he's telling the world what to do. We got to ask the question, what shall I do to be saved? If you don't ask that question from the right source, you'll get the wrong answer. You're right. Right. That's why we ask the question. We have to take the word of God, the Bible, to answer some of these questions. Someone say that. Amen. And Peter has been given the answer from Jesus to tell the people what to do because he said, Peter, I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom. Yeah. And when people ask you the question, you have the key to give them the answer. If they don't want to hear it, you have the key right. to let them go their own way. Mm -hmm. Listen. Now when they heard this, they were pricking the heart and said unto Peter and the rest of the apostles, Men and brothers, what shall we do? Here's the answer. Then Peter said unto them, do what? Amen. Do what? Amen. Do what? Amen. And do what? Be baptized, every one of you, in the name of who? Jesus Christ. Father, what? Amen. What did John come preaching? Amen. Repentance for the what? Amen. What did John come preaching? And they need to know what to do, right? Yeah. Why do you know? Why they need to know what to do? So they had their sins properly removed. Right. Am I making any sense? Yeah. Sin? Yeah. Wow. And Peter is saying, in order for the sins to be removed, you got to repent and be baptized in the name of who? Jesus. In the name of 
what? And you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. John said, he said, he said that word. John even said it. Right, right. He's going to steal the Holy Ghost. Right. And it's being fulfilled through Peter. Really. I love this. Yeah. Then he says here, listen, it's not just for the Jews only. It's for the promise unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Right. Jesus is calling somebody to so he can answer that question in your life. Mm. What shall I do? Mm -hmm. Remember, remember what I was trying to give my life to Jesus. I mm. asked, well, how do you do it? What shall I do? Mm. A lot of folks gave me unscriptural, mm. unscriptural mm. revelation. Mm. Right? Just believe in your heart, confess what you're not, and shall be saved. Right. They told me, just be good, and you shall be saved. But when I see what the Word of God says, when I ask that question, the Word of God says, He's going to be baptized. Everyone in the name of Christ is sin. And you should see this Holy Ghost. For the promise unto you and to your children, for all of all, is many of the Lord God shall call. And with many other words that He Acts 2 40, says, and with many other words that He testified and exhort, saying, Say who? Yes. From this what? Yes. Yes. Then they that gladly in the city, verse Acts 2 41, then they. And glad to receive the word of what? <laughs> and the same day there were 3,000 added <laughs> to the church. What shall you do? Repent of your sins. Receive that to the Lord Jesus' name, Jesus Christ your faith. Then I conclude with St. John 3 16. For God so loved the world. For God so loved the world. For God so loved the world. That he gave his only God's son. That whosoever mm -hmm. believed in him should what? Not perish. But should what? Have everlasting life. You become the wheat. You will not be the one that baptized with fire. Mm -hmm. You're the one that baptized with the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Why? Because God loved you before you was even born. Mm -hmm. He sent John to ask the question why. He sent Peter to ask the question, why? And now he's given us an opportunity to ask the question, what should I do? For God so loved the world, he gave his only God's son, whose other victims shall not perish, but have what? To have what? To have what? When you get baptized in Jesus' in name, you are promised everlasting life. Yeah. Huh. Woo! My God. I But thank God there was someone that knew the answer. Right. <laughs> For God sent not his son, in St. John 3, 17, I'm told. For God sent not his son into the world to do what? Condemn. To do what? Condemn. God ain't coming here looking for your faults. You already know him. Right. He's not looking for you. He, he knows what you are. Thank you. He knows what you are.
She had a calendar. <laughs> there were nine of us. Right. And she said, when you mess up, when you don't want to ask you to do, well, write your name on the calendar. You remember that? <laughs> Not clear. What you and, said. And, and we weren't that smart. <laughs> but what we do, if I did something wrong, I go write it down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we weren't too smart with it. Thank you for coming out to you, Lord. 